welcome back everyone so in this lecture we are going to see how we can remove the ambiguity from a grammar in order to make it unambiguous as you can recall from our previous lecture that if a grammar is ambiguous it will generate multiple parse trees for leftmost derivations or for rightmost derivations and this we do not want because the parser we cannot write a parser where the output is can be uh, uh, multiple so we have to remove this ambiguity from the grammar so to do this what we have to do is we have to rewrite the grammar we have to modify the grammar so that this ambiguity is removed now as you can recall we saw that the ambiguity was because of two reasons one was because of the associativity as to which one will be done first left to right associativity can be left to right or it can be right to left say for example 2 plus 3 plus 4 means that 2 plus 3 will be done first then with the result we will add 4 to it whereas if i have say 2 to the power 3 to the power 2 this means 2 to the power 3 to the power 2 so first i have to evaluate 3 to the power 2 so 3 to the power 2 is uh 9 then only i can evaluate 2 to the power 9 okay so here now i have to my associativity is this side okay so this is from right to left so one of the reasons for uh, ambiguity was because of associativity and the other one other reason was your precedence precedence so if i have 2 plus 3 into 4 in that case which one will be done first 2 plus 3 or 3 into 4 so we have to handle the or we have to rewrite the grammar to handle these two uh, issues that is associativity and precedence let us start with associativity so associativity as i said can either be left to right or from right to left okay so what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to uh, restrict the parse tree from growing in both directions that was the issue that we had if i again i can go back uh, to our previous discussion so here you can see i could expand this tree could grow from the right hand side this side as well as it could grow from this side from both sides that's why we had two different parse trees so uh, what we will do is we are going to restrict in order to handle associativity we are going to restrict the growth of the tree the growth of the parse tree in a single direction in a single direction only and what would be the direction that will depend upon the associativity so if a if a particular operator or if we want that Uh, for a particular uh, symbol we want to have left associativity then we will allow only the tree only to grow to the left same way if i want right associativity then i will write the grammar in such a way that it will allow the tree parse tree to grow only in the right direction so let's see so we had this e is uh, e gives e 
plus e okay let me just take plus only okay so i want that for plus it is i want that this is left associativity plus is le associativity is left to right okay so uh, this is not exactly uh, i should not write it like this let me write it like this left to right okay so because i have two e's out here i can expand either this way or i can expand this way okay so i'm going to restrict this how i'm going to rewrite this grammar this production to allow growth in only the left direction that means i will write it like this e is e plus t or uh, t and what is t t is i now if you look at this e is e plus t or t okay and t is what id that means now you can see let me write uh, now let me draw a parse tree from for uh, this example id plus id plus id let's say since we have we are taking only one uh, single uh, operator so this i can i can start with e now if you look at this rewritten grammar here i have from e i can either go to e plus t or t okay so let me go to e plus t all right now if i expand if i if i want to now expand this i can go to only only the leftmost derivation will give me only i can grow only through e i cannot grow through t because t what happens if i expand this i'm going to stop here i cannot expand any more so i can grow only along the left direction so i can only expand e so expand e how again i will give it like this e plus t all right now here i can expand it as t and t can be expanded as id this t can be expanded as id and this t can be expanded as id now i cannot have any other any other parse tree for this for this grammar for the same parse uh, for the same string that we are parsing so if i have e okay i cannot use any other production i have to use this production only if i use t if i use the production t then i'm going to stop here at id okay so i don't want that so if i have if i start from here then the only only expansion that i can do is i have to expand along this side so this is if ca in case of your left associative operators what happens if it is right associative suppose i write like this id to the power id to the power id now this is right associative this operator is right associative that means i have to do this first then i can evaluate this so now what was my grammar i did not have a production for it so let me write it like this say my earlier production would have been something like this okay same like the others now because of this it creates ambiguity so what i'm going to do is i'm going to again rewrite but now because this is right to left associative this operator is right to left associative so we are going to rewrite this as your mm, let me rewrite this as uh, something like this e e here would be t e or t and t is i okay so if you see as you can see 
for this now mm, we can uh, we can write this as we can write uh, this like this so now let us uh, have a parse tree for this so uh, again our expression is id to the power id to the power id so i start with e and what is my production i can use t power e so t power e so again t i cannot expand along t because here i get only id i stop here but for e i can only expand around this side so this is what t power e okay so this again gives me id and this i can expand it as t and this i can expand it as i so now we are restricting or we are allowing rather the tree to grow along the right okay so this kind of a production where we are allowing so if you see this is e and this e appears here so you can think of this something like a recursion right if you can think of each of these symbols to be some function and we are calling that means when we are calling e then the function t then this and then this function is being called okay so first t is called then this caret is called then other uh, uh, e is called so you you can think of these to be function calls so this is a recursion here you are calling e again but then this recursion is first you are calling t okay then you are calling the recursive function so this type is known as your right recursive right recursive on the other hand the previous one the way we wrote it here here you see this is also recursion this is also recursive uh, production but now the recursion is to the left okay so first you call e and then you call something else so this is known as your left recursion so what we have done to remove the ambiguity caused because of associativity rules is that we have restricted the tree from growing in both sides and to do that we have just introduced one new symbol okay t here and we have made written the production such that if it is left to right associativity then we have written the rule or the production as a left recursion format and if the associativity is uh, right to left then we have written this production in the uh, right recursive format in both cases we have introduced this new symbol so this is how we can remove associativity from uh, associative are uh, uh, not uh, sorry not remove associativity but to remove ambiguity which is caused because of associativity issues the next is associated with uh, uh, ambiguity caused because of precedence rule precedence rules okay so precedence rules tells us which operator will be executed first so if i have a plus and a multiply the precedence rule tells me that multiplication has to be done first before addition so how does this uh, translate to, uh, how can we incorporate this information in our uh, in our grammar in our earlier grammar in our first grammar that we used that was this grammar let me just clear it up little bit okay so in this grammar there was no concern for associativity or precedence so we rewrote it we rewrote this grammar to incorporate 
associativity in this manner. So we have rewrote uh, the, you have rewritten the grammar rules in this manner. Now to incorporate precedence, what we have to do is we have to include something called levels. So to include levels in our grammar, we have to first write the rules. Let's say I have, I'm talking about plus and multiply. So this was what I had, mm, E plus T or T, okay, T derives IV, okay. So I could have written F, uh, E also something like this. E derives E into T, T, okay, and T derives ID. So now this takes care of the associativity, but it still doesn't take care of the precedence because I may choose this production or I may choose this production. So they are on the same level. They are, or I can say they are at the same level. So plus and multiply are at the same level because I can pick either. So we have to define some levels here. So let's see how we can give, define the levels. So let us rewrite this grammar to be something like this. E is E plus T or T or T and T now instead of deriving id t will be t into f and then f or f derives id so what we have done is basically we have created two different levels at the first level i have plus okay so that means when i start i have to start from e so i can use E plus T. All right. But to get to get uh, mm, to get the value here, I have to first get the value of T. All right. So to get the value of T, I have to expand T. So T I can expand by using either this or this. Okay. So now if I have a multiplication in my expression, in my string, if I have a multiplication, then I have to expand T using this expansion. Okay, so now let us see how this will happen. So now I, I can see that always, whenever we want to expand anything, we have plus and multiply in the same expression, then first I have to apply plus, then only I can apply multiplication because I can start with E, but without, uh, but without going through E, I cannot directly go to multiplication because it is in a different level. I can get to multiplication only, only after going through the first production. Now, suppose I don't have multiplication in my expression. Like suppose I have ID into ID. In that case, I can directly go from T. So E derives T, then T derives t into f okay so i have now t i have to i have only one multiplication so i will use t derives f okay and then f derives id and similarly here f derives id so i get id into id okay so uh we have defined, we have defined different levels for our uh, operators. So higher precedence, the higher the precedence, okay, the lower will be the level. Okay, and vice versa. So lower precedence, will be higher would be the level 
So if you see here, plus has got a lower precedence, but its level is higher. Whereas multiply has a higher precedence, but its level is lower. So if I have, if I have three operators, say A, B, and C, and their precedences are in this manner, A, B, and C, A has the lowest, and C has the highest precedence, then I may write something like this, E is E A, uh, say let's call it, uh, let's say T, then T, then T here would be increased with would be like T B F or F and F would be let's say F C uh, let's call it G or G and then G finally stops at C I okay so for every production, we are giving a way out. We are giving, this is the way out. This is the way out. That means an exp I may have an expression without having the operator A, B, or C. Okay. Suppose I have uh, ID, B, ID, C, ID. Think of B and C as operators. So in that case, I don't have A. So I don't need to use this production. In that case, I will use this escape route. Think of it as an escape route from the operator. So I will come out from here. If I have the operator, then I can only go through this production. Okay. And if there are other product operators here, then I can, I have to go to them only via these levels. So T from E, I can go to T from T, I can go to F from F, I can go to G. So, using this, uh, this manner, in this manner, we can now have, define our, uh, rewrite our grammar to take care of the associativity and precedence. Okay, so for associativity, if it is left to right associative, then make the grammar left recursive. And if it is right to left rec uh, associative, then make it right recursive. And for precedence, to in the introduce levels. Okay, so this is how you can remove ambiguity from your uh, from your grammar. Let us see with an example. 